My name is Dan Noakes. I am the Systemic Challenge Lead for CPI. And today we're going to talk about circular economy in brief. So circular economy fundamentally means anything that avoids incineration and landfill. There is a thing called the waste hierarchy as part of the European Waste Directive. And that tells you to reduce, reuse, recycle and recover. In contrast, to circular economy, we have the linear economy, which is what we've always had. And this is the case of take, make, dispose. The problem with this is we're mining minerals and oil to manufacture goods, producing goods, in which we use right around the world in our everyday lives. But at the end of the time in which we've used the products and the materials, we simply discard them. This is the take make dispose model that we need to move away from to get to a circular economy. Manufacturing itself produces wastes. Manufacturing gets to choose where it gets its materials from. If it's raw materials, then that plays to a linear economy. If manufacturing resources its materials from secondary raw material, i.e. recycled materials, then it plays to a circular economy. So circular economy is important and the reason why it's important is because it reduces our impact on the environment. It reduces our need on raw materials extracted from the ground and every time you extract raw materials from the ground you're causing pollution within that environmental setting but also you're creating emissions from transporting materials around the world, manufacturing materials, all uses energy which all creates carbon emissions. So by recycling these materials and making the most of them at their end of life to give them a new life, we're reducing the amount of overall carbon emissions that we put into the atmosphere. This is helping us to fight climate change and this is helping us to achieve our net zero carbon targets by 2050. The choice of materials we use are important when it comes to achieving circular economy. In Europe, we have an awful lot of wood resource, sustainable forestry. And we convert this into cellulose, which goes into paper, and that paper we can recycle. We have the same idea around plastics. Plastics being used in everyday life and often used in the packaging that our food comes in. Some plastics are more recyclable than others. Polypropylene, polyethylene, PET. Other plastics like PVC, polystyrene, are harder to recycle and they influence the circular economy within our cities when we make packaging and other products from these materials and we discard them in the same way as we do with the other plastics. Metals, however, should be infinitely recyclable. So if we collect our aluminium cans, aluminium can keep going around the circle as much as it needs to. And the same goes for glass. Whether it's glass that becomes jars, jam jars, whether it's Pyrex dishes, or whether it's glass for window panes in construction of buildings. The energy that goes into manufacturing glass is significantly reduced when you use old glass in the recycling and manufacturing process of new glass. These are the benefits of circular economy. And if we track material flows, how we process, handle, and use our materials, we make sure we capture where these materials are in the, in the circle, and we feed them back into manufacturing processes then we can look to reduce emissions, carbon emissions, global emissions and environmental pollution for the benefit of the planet and for people. So circular economy takes into account environmental, social and economic impacts and it has to because circular economy can be damaging if not done properly. That said, in order to achieve circular economy, we need to have something known as circular business models. And what circular business models are, 
There are ways of making financial gain from a circular system that outweighs the financial gain of doing the, the least desirable thing, which is to dispose of those materials within an economy. So an example of where circular business models have been successful. When the government brought in landfill tax and landfill allowance tax for councils, it meant businesses were now going to be taxed a significant amount of monies against the materials they disposed to landfill and councils were going to be charged a tax, a fee, for all biomaterial that are going to landfill. This, in essence, created a new industry called the recycling industry, the waste industry. And from it, new businesses emerged to find these materials, to collect these materials, to reprocess these materials back into secondary raw materials that can go back into manufacturing. This, as we know it, is recycling. The challenge today is how do we find the next generation of circular business models that can help us to move up the waste hierarchy to reuse. And that means taking back the materials and products that we once loved and no longer need and then give them back to a system that can refurbish, replenish, to go back into reuse either for the same people or new people to make the benefit of those materials and products. That will drive greater efficiencies in a circular economy and it will reduce even more impact on raw materials that feed into a circular economy. And in essence, less emissions, more efficiency and a better society. So where we are today, circular economy has its place within the European Commission having produced the Circular Economy Action Plan, which is driving a lot of legislation, funding, innovation and new business across European states. It is driving that reduction of residual waste. The European Commission wants to halve residual waste. And the UK has recently adopted similar proposals. They require cities to reduce residual waste, that's waste going to landfill or incineration, by 50% by 2042. And this puts a big burden on cities, on local authorities, to change the way that they're dealing with materials that are placed on the market within a city and how they recover these materials and how they recycle these materials. This is where CPI comes in because CPI is helping cities to map the material flows and their circular economy objectives, as well as de developing the next generation of recycling technology. We have DeathCycle, who use deep eutetic fluids to recover the valuable metals from waste electronic and electrical equipment. And we have Stuff for Life, who have identified the importance of recycling valuable materials from personal protective equipment used in industries like construction. And in addition, CPI has been instrumental in pushing for bio-based and biodegradable, sustainable materials for use in things like packaging or other applications where plastics, conventional plastics, can be replaced with materials that are less harmful for the environment if ever they leak into the environment. So this has been Circular Economy in Brief. I've been Dan Noakes. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave a comment below of what you'd like to see in the next series of discussions. And I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.